Hello, Aini. Is about drawing boundaries. Why are boundaries important? Why we should draw them? Why is it important? And learning to say no, how important it is, or how important people are in our lives. Do we draw boundaries well? How would you rate yourself, Tamara? How would you rate yourself on a scale zero to ten? I'm good with drawing boundaries with people. Zero um, uh, meaning least, and ten meaning best. I draw boundaries with people. Your first feeling, first thought. Actually, it's related to the persons themselves. So, like, if like it's my parents, I would say that I don't draw any boundaries with my parents. This is my case. If it's like related to work, if it's related to other things, you will be able to draw more boundaries. Okay, so that's interesting. Okay, so with parents, of course, we don't draw boundaries because you feel obligated, you feel they brought you up, they give you life, they give you so much more, so you can't say no, completely. So with loved ones, definitely we're not able to draw boundaries. And with those who are at work or maybe they're less important, we try to work with these people and we do draw boundaries in relationship or some area of our life. That's one aspect. Thank you for bringing it to our awareness. Aline. Unmute, unmute. Uh, it depends also on my um, uh, on the relationship I'm, I'm having with the person that I'm putting boundaries with. Uh, but I can say I'm very bad in these things. <laughs> I mean, I don't put boundaries very easily. And uh, yeah, so I can give like three or four. So when I say, what do we fear? the most when we um, don't draw boundaries. So let's talk about with those who we don't draw boundaries and then that is where Hoda, Laini, you all can also chat. Like if you're offline, no problem, but then chat and let me know. That's why I've written the question on the chat. What do we fear the most when we don't, we, when we don't draw, draw boundaries? Well, reason number one is fear of losing the person. What else? Fear of rejection. Oh, yes. Wow. Then three, fear of loneliness. What else? Lenny, maybe more inputs from you, Hoda, if you can. Fear of failing, we over in order to Please, others. Compensate, sorry. So, whenever we are talking about and when we are not able to draw boundaries, which means there is an understanding with the environment or not understanding with the environment where we give more than what we are receiving. Do we agree to this definition of not drawing boundaries well, where you land up giving a lot or maybe the other person starts taking you for granted or violating your honor to be yourself, where I think we start getting disturbed and that starts draining us because whenever I keep talking about that there are four layers at which we operate, you know, whenever we uh, talk about mental health or mental health scenarios. First is the thought. The second is emotions, energy, and actions or body. Sometimes where you land up giving more than what you receive, these are the areas where we actually face a lot of drainers and stressors, which we're not able to really heal or deal with. And 
when we say that these are the thoughts that we are not able to deal with boundaries start taking a toll on your body because by the time the stress that is happening at the at the level of the body somewhere we were not able to draw boundaries even with your own self where your thoughts keep going in every direction and you don't know how to bring those thoughts back and then in that anxiety you want to give more you want to commit more you want to do so many things which perhaps are out of your or beyond your control and understanding but you still land up doing uh, you know so much more at the end of it so if we say that people who matter to us is where we don't draw boundaries but are we not then giving our the key to our peace to them tell me i know because tamara brought it to uh, you know right to the class in the in the beginning of the class saying okay maybe with parents we don't draw boundaries but is there not a need to draw a boundary even with them maybe as a child we were not allowed to but even as an adult that you've grown up is there is there still lack of freedom or an obligation that you feel amara what do you feel yeah and for my case uh, i'm i'm never ever been able to say no especially to my father because of the uh, the love and the uh, all the things that he has given me in my life i always feel that i owe him a lot and it was so my parents but especially my father i don't know why especially my father but this is how i feel i was never ever been able to say no for him but are you happy that way does it give um, you happiness no i would say that then, i feel then that there is no problem my freedom has been taken uh -huh. yeah in some cases yes okay so leni saying that people also will think that i'm cold or i'm not warm person uh yeah thank you leni and as you feel you owe them for what they've given for us definitely but i think most of us also have many complaints with those loved ones with whom you're not drawing boundaries because they violate your space where you do not land up getting space for yourself or time for yourself because this is another fear that people will perceive me selfish that also is the fear is it true leni yes okay then he saying thumbs up yes and the time any any idea please see chat that we have asked a question i don't know if you have the part where we are saying why what do we fear the most when we don't draw boundaries with others around us in in our environment because i very strongly feel the major reason behind all these questions or reasons that we are writing people will perceive us selfish people will uh, you know label us people will reject us people will not talk to us the fear of loneliness blah 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 everything somewhere the self esteem and deservability plays a major role do we agree to this yeah that when your self esteem is always seeing that i will lose this person or i have this void that will be created once this person leaves me which is maybe loneliness or nobody will be there to care for me or whatsoever and then in that is where we land up not drawing boundaries well so perhaps we were also threatened as a child by parents or peers or uh, you know even even our our authorities who conditioned us that only when you give is where you'll be accepted otherwise you will not be good enough so there is a certain fear that we feel that we'll be labeled as not being good enough when when we you know when we draw boundaries people will tell me because there is a lot that you land up giving without your willingness and without you not having space because then when you're not able to land up this happened with me once i would go beyond my capacity to deliver to everybody within my environment including my 
my family, my parents, my wife, my everybody at the end of it. And today, yes, that is one of the uh, aspects which I face today that there are people who perceive me to be very selfish until a certain period in time. So how, how does one work with the self-esteem? Because how do we learn to put our needs and ourselves before anybody else's needs and before? Because I always keep feeling and saying this very strong statement that you can't pour from, a, in, from an empty cup. So when you don't draw boundaries well, you, you know, start getting drained. And that drained feeling is what not, is not allowing you to. So your fulfillment also, you are procrastinating or dealing when you give beyond your capacity. Please interact, everyone. Bedwine, I want to hear from you. And please don't type if you can, you know, without uh, putting the video on, you can speak. You know that, that spoken interaction is always good. Lenny? Otherwise, we'll be left with uh, not much of an interaction and I'll have to end the session by 8.30. Where well, it's not, again, my, my sessions are more interactive. They're, they're not like a, uh, you know, like a, like a discourse where someone comes and endlessly keeps talking about for an hour. We need data, we need to understand and interact with your map of boundaries and then we work with it because when I say it's not map, when I say map, yeah, Bitcoin or someone writing, Lini, yes, guilty if, if I can't give. So who has given this program of, you know, feeling guilty? Or if I don't give, then I'll feel guilty about it. And these boundaries about anything and everything, about your food, about sexuality, about intimacy, about your family, about your uh, your siblings, your everyone, everyone within your environment. It's... Yeah, but that's the that's the risk that we are going into, no, Lenny. How, much, how many of us are actually able to take the risk with being good enough or always? How long will you be able to please everybody within your environment? How long? Not we will not be able to. In spite of you giving more, they will expect more and they'll keep giving. So there are some hel healthy boundaries we give because, uh, you know, we, I'll tell you, the, when we talk about the boundaries, let me clear this and then I'll share with you all. See, if I'm drawing something here, this is a family scenario where these are the individuals who are within the family. What do you see? When you see these circles, intersection, intersection, align. I cannot see any circles here. Can't see uh, circles. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw it. Yeah. Sorry, um, you phone, then you have to slide your screen a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. So I see maybe complications or problems. Problems. Yes. So within families, when there are a lot of people who are heart ruled, when they come together, they tend to feel fear of rejection because everything that we wrote now categorize these into different reasons why I am not good enough is again need to be accepted. This is a heart ruled person sign. People will feel I'm selfish. That's a heart ruled person again. So heart ruled people are not able to draw boundaries well. And then there is a other gamut of head rule people who are very sharp and curt or very rigid about their drawn boundaries that they do not violate. So this is one aspect of overlapping boundaries. This is called enmeshment. Enmeshment is always about too many heart rule people. If you don't include me or if I don't get included, I will feel rejected and I'm not good enough and I'm really fragile because I want, I have this need to be accepted by the whole family within the family scenarios. So this is called an enmeshed family. 
and then there is a family which is if if i put this in a structure for example if i put this like a family system this will be called an enmeshed family system where there are too many heart rule people come together in order to understand that this is what my life is all about and we cannot do what we want to do so that's coming from a heart rule person so all those people who are feeling that i will be rejected i will not be accepted i will be uh, perceived curt rude shrewd or selfish these are the people who are all heart rule people and heart rule people are the ones who when they do not draw boundaries well they suffer a lot the exact opposite scenario is this one who who are very rigid with their boundaries for example so these people are outside the box they are very subjective where they say people who matter to me are the people where i'll overlap my boundaries at work or in a system i will not be responsible so i will draw my boundaries inside but not these are called the disengaged head rule people they prefer to live alone rather than living with good team scenarios with people now these are the people who are too rigid with their boundaries they do not allow anybody to step into their circles of boundaries that they draw but why thank you for keeping the video on now can you share something hello hello good evening i'm sorry i must uh, first on the session i i am reading some of the things in fact your interaction is much you know the contribution will help we are waiting if anything that you want to add to this head rule and heart rule <laughs> boundaries and no boundaries i'm sorry i missed the first, the, the beginning of the session so i okay. just joined yeah 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 okay i'm saying that we started with a question that what happens when we don't draw boundaries and what is running in our concern in in the back of our head when we don't draw boundaries with people what do we fear the most when we draw boundaries so everybody wrote fear of losing a person fear of rejection fear of loneliness feel pleasing people this is also overcompensation people will label me as i'm selfish i'll feel guilty if i don't draw boundaries or uh, if i draw boundaries so these are the perspective that people wrote and interacted about so uh, why yes elin a uh, question please uh, you're talking about boundary boundaries in which case i mean boundaries for everything or everyone or everything so that no one can violate your needs no one can exploit you no one can uh, uh, insult you or no one can take you for granted these are the scenarios are, that i'm talking about because when you are available too much to a person then i think that there is somewhere uh, the environment also starts taking you for granted that's also what mm -hmm. i have witnessed in in my life and people around me when you are too much giving people take you for granted have you ever come across a situation anyone where you were taken for granted by the person where you don't draw boundary or you didn't draw boundary with anyone i mean uh, of course but if we put boundaries in my opinion if we put boundaries all the time we will not be having any uh, intimate i mean intimate relationships or best friends or any good friends because if they're putting boundaries and we're putting boundaries that means uh, i mean it's a i don't know which means we are saying that we should not have boundaries otherwise we will never have no, that's what in, i can uh, see some, the fear of loneliness uh, is no, what no, you no, saying in, to a certain extent i mean and with some people uh, in my opinion i mean not all the time and not with all the people so there is again a fear association with drawing boundaries but why maybe Now, I I just have a question please is it us who put the boundaries or the society or the family or the friend or the job or, or our beliefs everybody. So, everybody i'm saying in personal professional or even uh, you know social scenarios that we are referring to 
when i say boundary see we are individuals let's say we are we are responsible for ourselves okay now let me put this as a as a cycle we have 24 hours let me put a little different perspective to this so that we understand the context of where i'm coming from okay so this is the representation of 24 hours that i'm putting on the white screen so we put 8 hours 8 hours and 8 hours that's what your representation of 24 hours looks like right so hi saba how are you good evening good to see you good evening sir yes and now when we say 8 pm uh, 8 hours of the day you don't draw boundaries this is for self this is for let's say profession and this is for family now these 8 hours have to be equally utilized now let's say if you also not draw boundaries in terms of your own responsibilities let's say if you require 10 hours for yourself now your day representation is going to be same not an hour more not an hour less how do you manage to get this how do you manage to understand so let's say if you land up giving more time to the profession because it's a demanding job what will you do you will take out time from the family these have to be adjusted within the 24 hours isn't it if i talk about the boundaries of time if your job is ever demanding, you compromise either. And if the family is then demanding, because family requires the time or you feel guilty for not giving time to children, you will take out time from yourself. So you are reducing your quality time of sleep. You can't sleep well. You can't eat well. You can't take care of your own needs. You can't go to the gym. You can't go out and do any other things. Now, all of these things have a certain impact on your health then. Then you try to balance it out then this way. Then again, the family time. So most of us are not able to manage this time and not being able to draw your boundary. And then what will happen? Either your professional side will take a toll on your relationships or your relationships, if they are very demanding and very imbalanced, you will not be able to pay attention to your job. That's what I meant when I said boundaries well. Are we able to balance things out in our life? Now tell me. Lenny, Sabha, you can also add to this. So nothing as of now. Just okay. uh, the one point we had picked once that even the hours of sleep, where do we put that? So, but uh, definitely from the boundary so perspective, that's the it is definitely self because even family and friends also come into this eight hours. So, family and friends come in because then within the four, four hours that you're also meant to divide your day. Now, this also will either then you run away from the family if there is a nagging family. Then you give more time to the friends. Maybe these two areas, you're okay. Then within the family and friends, there is a fight where you're not able to draw boundaries and then the friends take away maximum time of yours. So it also matters at what age and what stage of your life where you are. But your boundaries define the time, resources, money, uh, emotional resources that you invest into relationships, everything. And where your self-esteem actually becomes your major deciding factor where you are able to either overcompensate or not compensate, even for that matter. That comes from there. Yes, now, Bedwine, I hope I've answered 
your concern of what we were talking about. Is, is there a clarity now that what I mean when I say boundary? Yes, Tamara. Um, my question is, uh, do you draw the same boundaries with all the people around you? I think you have different type of boundaries according to the relation. But then that is where the, all the relation, let's say the family and friends come into different relations or a profession or yourself. These are the four things that you're always drawing boundaries, aren't we? I think uh, with each boundary, you need like to uh, maintain a certain value that you want to maintain for yourself when you draw it according to the self or a profession or family. So that's why let's the boundaries say, differs according to the relation. So let's say if you, if you need 12 hours a day to sleep, as simple as that, okay? Or time for yourself is 12 hours, but then your family tells you to wake up at five o'clock and give them time or do things correctly. Will you be able to do that and give more time to the family? Will you not compromise on your need of sleep and other time for your own self? And if you land up giving that time, of course, because you're not able to say no to your family, you will over, overdo. You will go out of your uh, space to give them the time. And then you will feel guilty for not giving them the time at the end of the day. And then that will become the accumulated heaviness, which you're not able to share or speak about or say anything. So our emotions actually keep going around and easily rather to not feel rejection at work or with friends and family, you always take it on your own self is what actually was I was trying to uh, bring it. And then at the cost of your own stress, you still keep pleasing others. Hmm. That's where we, we got to understand, isn't it? Yes. So what do we do about that? Do we learn to place our needs before without feeling guilty? Is there a way? Is there a way where we do not feel guilty and yet with assertiveness, I'm not saying with aggression, I'm not saying, but there are two individuals who can always say, this is what my need is. Can I take town a time out for myself and then I will give exactly what you're asking for. Even that overcompensation or overburdening yourself, we can be assertive and still say a no when it is required. Or maybe on, on weekly basis, maybe you have a time for family on a Sunday or a, or a Friday, a Saturday. However, we operate. Yes, Tamar. I think as long as you feel that you are able to give with love, you'll be able to keep giving because uh, in, I think in, if yourself is, uh, is able to give with love, not just out of responsibility, this is where you'll be keep giving. Out of love, yes, definitely. Because love has no boundaries. That is what, again, we understand. So selflessly and with compassion when you give. Yes, I can see that smile. But please add, because I, I see a lot of expressions. I want your inputs. Please say something. There is a proverb in Lebanon. Love, love say, doesn't require boundaries. Well, love doesn't have boundaries. So I saw a smile there. Please tell me. Yes, there is, there is a proverb in Lebanon that said, if you don't have enough for yourself, you can't give. To others, yes. So we must have love for ourselves so we can give to others. Definitely. That's what we are trying to conclude this entire part where we are saying you can't pour from an empty cup. You have to at least do few acts of love towards your own self. Anything that you love doing, maybe during the day, I know it's difficult to do things for your own self. If the environment is not doing it. See, when you are giving time to those who are already also caring for you, even now, it's a two-way exchange that happens that you receive and give both ways. But if endlessly you keep giving and there is no value that comes mm -hmm. from the other side, whoever it could be, then you have a right to at least start you know, loving your own self and still compassionately being available to others, but then assertively saying that this is my time. I will still be available to you, 
but start taking out at least one hour a day every day where you are not addressing anything for anyone but just for your own needs and your own self can we say that can we do that without feeling guilty so that's the that's the key take home today where we start doing things without feeling guilty and if there is guilt you can simply think about that guilt and whichever part of your body that is feeling heavy you tap that and and just breathe out that heaviness that something which is not keeping you in a in a good space just think about it and do the energy exchange with those who are overburdening you with a lot of responsibilities and professionally personally socially or spiritually start putting your priorities in place if not many hours at least 1 hour a day at least 30 minutes a day do those gestures and work and things that will really help you with that that is what we have to look for and that's how we will also make sense out of life and then we'll be able to exactly give what others may want and there will be more willingness there'll be more happiness because now you feel loved you you feel complete within your own self because you you are not complete you will not be able to cause completion outside in spite of you giving a lot there will still be people who will take you for granted and there'll still be people who will uh, you know still violate your peace and and harmony so you have to claim your harmony first which is which is required is what i very strongly feel that's what i started doing at one point in life and today there's a lot of peace that at least i receive i set my relationships right with uh, my family my loved ones my wife my son and my parents everybody today at least understands that if they have needs we also have needs we also are humans at the end does that make sense without feeling guilty if you can do that assertively again without breaking down without throwing tantrums without losing your cool or without any aggression if assertively we are able to let the other person know and because when we are not able to draw boundaries self esteem work is what we require so there are of course a lot of other techniques that we keep talking about uh, this week i am doing a workshop on something called emotional tapping technique or emotional freedom technique on 19th from 12 to 4 if anyone wants to learn how to draw boundaries and not feel guilty this is going to be an online and offline workshop both for abu dhabi if you all can uh, you know enroll for this there, there's nothing like it because eft is one of the wonderful tools how to handle your own emotional uh, you know up and down that definitely helps them. saba already knows eft Sabha, yes, how, how effectively are you practicing EFT even now? So uh, EFT, I think, is one of those techniques that uh, works pretty well. Whether it's anxiety, so it's basically whether for the future or for the past, is something that you can work with. So uh, I do practice it. Maybe I'm not a very ardent. Uh, uh, ardently, I'm not following it. But yes, when in times at the most stressed time. it's uh, it's one of the biggest tools to help and it's something that i work with uh, my kid also so oh he is doing it for your child also yeah so rayan yeah. also at times uh, does also that not yeah. bad yeah so nice. yesterday one of the other students snigda you know sabha snigda from bangalore she also started doing it with her child and she sent a video yesterday she doing eft with her child so these are some of the things which we can try and use it to tap or just whichever part of our body that gets heavy while we get overwhelmed with a certain emotional response and when we are not able to draw boundaries that is the time when you start giving even 15 minutes of eft or meditation or some kind of a walk listening to some music doing dance art you know painting sketching doodling whatever that you can do it just at least begin some uh, act of self compassion and self love to yourself so that will help you yes ma'am uh, i would also like to add that uh, i have understood that eft is also about making yourself aware that there is a particular problem and accepting that that okay it is there because more than often many tools say that we are like trying to deny that if you are if you are feeling sad don't think about it eft is more on the lines of that if even if you are feeling sad you want to you accept yes. that you are yes. feeling sad okay you let yourself accept. feel it right so that yes. that's 
So even when you are feeling guilty, even if you are feeling sad, lonely, people labeling, not labeling, and whatever, you can just simply tap that feeling out, and then calm that part of you down so that you are able to even give more with calmness. Otherwise, you will give or land up giving without. See, if you are giving and you are at harmony and balance, then I am not talking about that sort of boundary. Then there is no need for a boundary. Then you are doing it out of love, Tamara. What you explained was also right. But when you are giving out of love and then there is no conflict, is a different thing. But when even at this age, when there are expectations and then you are not able to give, and then when that anger spills over to others in the in the vicinity or within the environment, then that is where we are talking about it. That there is a deep need for you to then. Be in a in a boundary where no one violates. That's what we were talking about. Need to relate in order to define the boundaries. Sometimes. What I'm I'm sorry. Wouldn't it be there. too late? It yeah. It uh, sometimes it would be too late. To define your no, boundaries. So, so yes, I agree that it could be too late. As you are, I know, referring to your dad again. Is it? Not my dad only. Sometimes even with your like. Uh, with with, the, with your husband for something yeah, you, you you've been giving 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 and uh, just letting things pass and at the end you've been taken for granted with no also, receiving at all <laughs> so then even see it's never too late to even start assertively letting them know that this is my need and without i feeling fulfilled i won't be able to add value to your life that's what i'm saying have a assertive dialogue you can begin at at any point in time but you have to be assertive not with not with anything which is heavy or not with anything which is aggressive you can any time begin the cycle of self love and act i think that that definitely helps what do you say between Uh, honestly, I recently experienced how to not feel guilty about doing the best of myself or myself. Mm. Uh, recently, maybe since a year ago, because I've been taken as granted for many years from my family and the mind of Arabic people that say we should put our family first, our family needs. But now I start to do what what I want to do for myself, what I love to do to myself. Then I, I give to others. But I make myself. How, self, how do you self, feel in your body ever since last one year? Ever since you started doing the boundaries? Since since I changed my mind, how to think about my needs and uh, if I really need that uh, the thing I'm looking for or not. But when I change this, I I I'm get out of my depression. Pressure I, is gone. I've been depressed for many years because I was feeling guilty. For not doing the best for my family, it's about the, the Arabic mind that always say family is first, mom, dad, friend, the, the brother, sister. But then I realized that I am I'm, I'm too old and I didn't do anything for myself. All my life I've been doing to other. Uh, I, I was taking my value from the other others' mind or others' opinion. Now I realize that my value come from inside me. not from outside exactly so that's where we need to just simply so i am now going to take you all through a quick exercise just about 5 minutes or a 10 minutes of stuff which i call it circle of excellence so maybe we can just close our eyes and i'll take you through a simple process where you step and put all your needs and step into that and put all the other people in the circle of influence okay that i will attend to you when i'm complete so i want your completion and your resources exactly i will tell you all that whatever is your need you put it in that circle and step into it are we ready okay so just close your eyes everyone and put your feet flat on the floor and center yourself Breathe in through the nose. Inhale positive energy. Breathe out through the mouth. Exhale negative energy. As you are breathing in and out, center yourself. Imagine as if there is a shaft of white light which is coming from your crown, passing through your spine, leaving your tailbone, going deep down in the core of Mother Earth. you are well connected with the cosmos above and the earth beneath you 
as your feet are connected to the gravity. And as you are centering, allow your thoughts to come and go. It's okay. And just ahead of you, about one step away, I want you to imagine a circle. This is your circle of excellence. It's like a ring in which I want you to place all your needs of peace, compassion, self-love, time for yourself, your health, your good sleep, good food, good self-care. Everything that you desire at this moment of your life, love, care, I want you to put it all in this ring, just one step ahead of you. And I want you to create another peripheral ring where you actually tell everybody else in your environment to stand and step out there. And as you are telling others to step out of that first ring that you've created for yourself, where you keep all your needs right up front, I want you to now step into that ring where only you are standing and everybody else is in the outer circle. See what you see, hear what you hear, feel what you feel, step out and keep all of them with respect, with love, with connection and with assertiveness, tell them I will only be able to cater to your needs when my needs are met with. I want myself to be complete before I give you any of the resources that you may require. Otherwise I will not be able to do justice. So give a lot of love to each one of them, but you step into your circle of excellence and breathe in all those <coughs> things for yourself. As if you are taking in all these resources from your heart and allowing it to spread and be energized into every cell, every muscle, every fiber of your body completely at all the levels. Breathe in and take all these resources of self-love, time for yourself, health, hygiene, care, touch, self-acceptance, self-love, self-compassion, self-care, whatever you may want to call it. Breathe in and bring both your hands to your heart now as if this is coming in through your heart. And breathe out if any part of your throat that is feeling choked while saying this to others, please step away. So open your self-expression assertively to let others know that these are my needs and I will claim them first before I give any of my energies to you. And totally and completely breathe out any heaviness, guilt, any fears, any incompletions that you may experience. Breathe out totally and completely and let it go because what you're releasing right now, no matter how hard you try, will never ever come again. And see how light you are feeling from within when you are letting off all these unwanted responsibilities and undrawn boundaries that used to bother you as you are moving on and stepping into your circle of excellence. Claim your right to be yourself. Drop all the pleasing and give it away without feeling guilty. Bring both your hands to your heart and integrate this part of you and take all these resources and love for yourself. Thank you. It is done. It is done. It is done. Open your eyes whenever you are comfortable when you come back. Any sharing? Bedwind? Yes. Anything you want to say, Tamara? Are we good? Thank you so much, everyone, for giving your time weekly. Thank you so much for being there always. Bedwine, thank you so much. Laney, thank you for your silent participation, yet very interactive. Thank you for all your inputs. Take care. Bye bye. See you. Thank good you. night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good, good night. night. Bye, Sarah. Good night. Bye. Good, good night. night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.
Any anything you want to share before we end the session? Bye bye. See you. Good night.